All right, so I've had the question asked several times, what happens if you're in grid bypass mode, you're charging your batteries, but then you also have a significant load kick in, which could potentially put you over the 6,500 watts per inverter. Does it go over the 6,500 watt draw from the AC input? Or does the grid charge start to throttle down while the load is being supplied from the grid? Well, let's find out. I, I've not wanted to do this test for fear that my assumption is wrong and something bad could happen. I don't know, I mean, we've seen little weird things happen with these inverters, so I didn't want to chance any accidental oopses. But <laughs> I got asked again, and I really didn't have an answer other than my assumption, so all right, I figure we're, we're just gonna try this and, and, and see what happens. Again, my, my assumption is that if you have a large load kick in while you're grid charging, your grid charging is going to throttle down while the grid supplies the power to the load. And when that load goes away, then grid charging is going to ramp back up. The, the exact same way that happens with solar. So solar provides power to the loads. And when there's no load, the excess power goes into the battery. Let's get everything turned off and prepped and ready to go, and we'll get started. All right, so I believe I have everything ready to go. I actually went through and turned off all AC loads in my grid-only panel, so that the only thing getting pulled into the house is these units and the two lights in this room that I'm in right now. And if we look over here at the tablet, you can see on the left hand side I have my Sense app, which is actually monitoring direct feed off of my main service panel. So you can see I've got 330 to 360 watts coming in through my main lines coming from the grid. And then on the right you see I've got Solar Assistant up and we'll be jumping back and forth between that. Uh, looking at a multimeter on the AC input lines and we'll also be grabbing the thermal camera and taking a look at the breaker the ACN breaker as well and then I'm gonna have Ian he's upstairs on uh, the radio he's gonna be turning on some loads for me to help increase the draw coming from the grid and we're gonna see if that grid charging decreases as the load increases so putting 40 amps in per inverter is about 2,000 watts into each battery. Not a significant load, but I figure if we see that charging first, and then we increase our loads on the system, we should see that grid charging decrease. At least that's my assumption. So let's find out what happens. So first we're going to turn off solar and look at it. Our display over here we can see that our power usage is going up. Grid on the left and our charging on the our solar assistant on the right. So mixing the the charging coming from the grid as well as just the necessary loads for the little things running right now. We are just under 5,000 watts. And we're putting, what, just under 4,000 watts into the battery. Bump it up to 50 amps. So 50 amps going into the battery. Forty-eight, forty-nine, five thousand watts going into the battery, and coming from the grid, we're at sixty-one and change. 
And if we look down here, we can see 50 amps going into each battery. All right. So we are going to start with turning on the hot water upstairs. So that's going to kick on the well and the water heater. And we're going to let that run and see where that jumps up. And then if needed, I'm going to have Ian kick on a couple of microwaves and a vacuum cleaner as well. And I've got a vacuum down here to kind of help balance things out. All right, Ian, are you ready to go? Is that a yes or a no? All right, I want you to turn on the hot water in the laundry room, please. And we're going to let that run for a little bit. All right, something just kicked on, jumped up. 2300 watts. See, we've got 4700 watt load on the system now. I believe that's the water heater kicking in. Grid power coming in is 10,000 watts. And if we look, we've got 51 on each leg. Very even, nice balanced. We're still waiting on the water heater to kick in. I'm glancing over at the meter and we've got 45 watt or 45 amps coming on one leg, AC in. I just heard the well kick in, and we can see it on the screen. We jumped up 1800 watts. Now we see it reflecting here in solar assistant, 6200 watts, 1100, or excuse me, 11,000 watts on the grid. We're jumping over here, 5900 even on each leg. All right, Ian, go ahead and turn on the microwave in the kitchen, please. Starting now. Go at one. All right, so we just added another 1,600 watts. You can see that reflect here in solar system. We're seeing our battery charging is starting to go down a little bit. 4,700 watts. We're going to look at the split here. So we've got 4,700 watt load on one leg, 3,100 on the other. 44 amps going into the battery on 150 on the other. And I'm actually gonna plug in a vacuum on phase two. So you can see 1,400 watts, 14,800 coming in through the grid, 8,900 watt load. Still putting 4,700 watts into the battery, which is interesting. So load 4,700 on leg one, 41 on leg two. 47 amps on leg one going to the battery, 50 amps. 49 amps going in on two. And coming from the grid, we've got 7,500 watts on one and 6,900 watts on the other. Ian, go ahead and click on the other vacuum, please. see 63 amps on that one leg. And we're still charging at 50 amps. 7,300 watts coming from the grid, 6,800 watts coming from the other leg. See the inverters look fine, 84, 83 degrees. Yeah, by this display it gets really hot, 90 degrees. At the breaker, 80 some degrees. And you've got 63 amps getting pulled in. A 60 amp breaker. Ian, go ahead and turn on the microwave in the kitchen again. Don't you need to turn both of them on or just one? Turn them both on. We're going to see what happens with that. I don't know. I'm waiting for the lights to go out. There's one. All right, 14,400 watts. There's two. 16,000 watts. All right, so our battery charging is going down now. So we did throttle down to 29 amps. You can see our load on inverter one is 5,600. So it is throttling it down. I think our well just kicked in again. So 
So now we're down to 2,500 watts going into the battery. 11,000 watt load. So 6,300 on inverter one, 5,200 on inverter two. We're down to 15 amps going into the battery and 34 amps going into the other battery. Very neat to see. Now we're down to 17 and 34. All right, so I think we've, we've made the point that when you're charging, it will ramp down when your load ramps up. All right, Ian, you can go ahead and turn off the two microwaves, the laundry room spigot, and the vacuum, please. Turning solar back on, everything should start to ramp back down. We should still have. We should still have around 6,000 watt load because the well and the water heater are probably still going to be running. But you can see on my my sense app here on the left, we just drastically dropped and we turned everything off. So the water heater, when that gets done, that'll turn off and everything will level out. You have to get past that threshold of remaining power. How much remaining power do you have? How much, how much, how much room do you have before you hit that 6,500 watt capacity? And what's the difference between your load and how much you're actually charging? So I know I was jumping around a lot on the tablet display, is jumping back and forth between the different data pages. So I had watch power running and it was able to do 30 second logs for each inverter. So this is inverter one. You can see down here, uh, the green is going to be the charging current. The orangish color is going to be the load. So we had, you know, seven amps or so for so coming in for solar, a couple hundred watt load. You can see we jumped up to 40 amps and then to 50. And then right around here is where we started adding the additional loads, and we still stayed at that 50 amps. 49.50, 49.50, all the way, you can see the load slowly changing, 3,000, 47, 48. We're still charging with about 50 amps, but it wasn't until we started to get up to the 6,000 watt load range, that's when our loads really dropped down. So 6,062. 100, we're down to 16 and 18 amps going into the battery. And then you can see we turn solar back on, stop charging, let everything ramp back down. And the same thing on inverter two. So solar's on here, a couple hundred watts. We ramp up to 50 amps, charging with 3,000, 4,000 watts going into the battery. We still got 50 amps, 51 amps here. We started creeping up to the 5,000, 5,200 watt, and then that's when it started to go down to 34 and 36. Remember, inverter two, we did not have a full load going up to the 6,000 watts, so that's why it stayed up this high. But still, it, it was able to ramp down, and you can see when your load gets up this high, your charging is going to start ramping down. And so I just kind of wanted to share with this with you, a little easier picture to see just just the numbers and if anybody's interested in the actual you know data I can make that available to you if you're interested so you saw we had 14,000 watts between the two legs coming in running what did we have the 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 well the water heater two microwaves two vacuums plus every other regular little load and on top of that about 20 amps per leg coming in for charging from the AC side putting 50 amps into the battery. And once we really kicked those last couple, that last microwave on really, that was when we really saw, especially on the phase one, charging started to drop as the load request went up. So we dropped down to what, what was it? 17 amps charging. So that's, that's nice to see that it will balance out. So great experiment. Ian, thank you for your help. Yeah, sure. <laughs>
it, it's nice to be able to have some actual proof that my theory was was correct that when you're trying to grid charge if you have a significant load kick in the grid charge will throttle down i had a feeling that's what it was going to do but again i hadn't seen any proof of it i hadn't seen anybody do it so with that i'm gonna let y'all go uh, y'all stay safe have fun and we'll catch up with you later